Hey guys, uh, part of Regeneration Nashville Church. Listen, our men's retreat's coming up and uh, we've got a tremendous response, but we still got some openings. And I want to encourage you if you thought, well, you know, I don't know if you're willing to go to that. You need to come to this. There is a rhema word that's going to be released and there is strength and unity. And I want to encourage you, change your schedule. Uh, I, I want to minister to you. Listen, the men we've not met you know, for a long time and we're, we're bringing this back together and you men are such a vital part of this church, but you're going to have a good time. You're going to leave and go, man, I'm glad I came to this. When can we do this again? And so come on, uh, get online, sign up. I'll see you then. God bless you. Generation Nashville. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. And if you're visiting with us today, welcome. We are so honored that you chose to worship with us today. And to our online audience, uh, we are so excited that you have joined us from across the nation and around the world. Amen. Amen. So are you ready to ascend to that place of worship? Amen. Hallelujah. So everybody stand with me and let's pray. Hallelujah. So, Father, we dedicate this time to you, Father. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. We, your people, applaud you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We applaud you, Lord. Your great love has taken over our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your faithfulness is eternal. And your truth endures forever. Amen. God bless you. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. It may be cold, but have you come to pray? Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Come on, put your hands together. I'll praise in the valley. Praise on.
Can we just lift our hands? Father, we thank you that you're the God of miracles, the God of the impossible. Oh, Lord, there's nothing that you can't do. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. the same God today and the same God tomorrow help me see a victory you already see let my faith be today what it will be tomorrow when I see the victory you
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just love on him a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we rest. Can you just take a deep breath in his presence? Oh, God. We rest in your purpose. We rest in your favor. We rest in your peace.
church i honor the presence of the lord that has settled down in this place man there's 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 nothing like the love of jesus when you when it just settles down and you can feel it and i'm so thankful that god has answered our prayers that we're here this sunday afternoon he held the snow and he showed up and he showed out and it's just the beginning amen god is so faithful this is just the beginning. Don't leave here without what you need today because God is in the house and he is looking to do things in your, in your life. If you'll just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. If you'll stand to your feet, we'll say our offering declaration together. 
Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I choose to sow cheerfully and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me because God loves to see me prosper. I am believing him for advancement, God ideas, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs. Amen. Ushers, you may serve the people. Hello, Regeneration Nashville. How's everybody doing? Yeah, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. If no one's told you they love you today yet, I want to be the first. I love you. And I just believe that God, I'm telling you, we're in Miracle Month. We are in Miracle Month. And we've been praying at the warehouse every night, uh, every weeknight at 535 Brick Church Park Drive. And uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, we've had a move of God's Spirit, especially the last two nights that we've been praying. We have had a powerful breakthrough in the Holy Ghost. So I just want to remind you that the church is open every weeknight, Monday through Friday, from 5 to 7 p.m. If you want to just stop in and pray, you don't have to stay for two hours. But uh, just stop in and pray with your church family. God is moving. And so I just... Just, I just want to put you in remembrance that to put a demand on the deposit of God, there is a powerful anointing in Regeneration Nashville. Do you believe that? Do you sense that? I mean, we, ha we just had a demonstration of that just now. I'm telling you, God's moving. And so I want you to bring in your prayer request. And if, you, if you're watching online and you have a prayer request that you would like for us to pray for, go to regenerationnashville.org and type in your prayer, prayer request. Our prayer team will be praying for you. And so we don't want anybody to be left out of Miracle Month. Uh, I just want to remind you that uh, we have a men's retreat coming up the 25th through the 27th of January. We also have, yes, a men's meeting. Pastor Kent and Pastor Harry Saylor will be ministering. And I did find out where that was. That's Deer Run. And I heard it's uh, wonderful. Yeah. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I don't. I didn't put my glasses on. But anyway, it's going to be great. So men, sign up. I, I just want to tell you this too. So Deer Run is not a massive hotel. It's a small resort. Space is limited. It is a re res resort retreat center. And so hurry in and get your name in so that your space will not be taken up because we want everybody that wants to be there to be a part of it. So we have a uh, community group training uh, next Sunday from 1 to 2.30. You don't want to miss that. Oh, you're going to love this. Jasmine Christmas Brady is going to be speaking at the ladies' meeting on Tuesday morning, and that is at 10 o'clock right here at Cornerstone. So you don't want to miss, um, ladies, if you're... So, so we have inclement weather, they tell us, coming in. And so please watch uh, your social media outlets because uh, all of this is just depending on the weather. So we do have plans to be at the church every night this week, but um, so watch social media, okay, because we do have some bad weather coming in. And if Pastor Jasmine is not able to speak on Tuesday, then we'll, we'll preempt that and, and have her to do that again. Just be watching for, uh, for the weather and, and what the church is saying. So I don't know. I just got so much stuff. They just give me so many papers. <laughs> Don't put your glasses on. That would just be too good. Okay, so that's not what I wanted either. So, oh my goodness. Oh, okay. So, we have visitors in today. And we have uh, somebody from Ohio. Where is Ohio? Can we welcome you? Stand, Ohio. We're glad you're here. God bless you. Glad to have you. 
And so we also have somebody from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, stand up, Memphis. Let us welcome you. Honored to have you. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else from out of state? Indiana, stand, Indiana. Indiana, let us welcome you. Honored to have you. God bless you. Anybody else from out of state? Maryland, stand up, Maryland. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Welcome to Nashville. Anybody else from out of state that we can honor? All right. Well, so we're just about to do something that is so fun. Just one of my favorite things in the world. And I want Pastor Kent to come because we are dedicating children to the Lord today. And as they're coming, I'll just tell you, I had a friend one day that was uh, cooking in the kitchen. And her little boy came in. And he said, Mama, I love being a part of the Jennings family. He said, I love Grandma and Grandpa Jennings and all my Jennings cousins and my aunts. And I love being a part of the Jennings family. And she said, oh, I'm so glad you do. He said, now, what's Grandma Sickle's last name? And she said, Sickle, Grandma Sickle. He said, yeah, I love all my aunts and uncles, Grandma and Grandpa Sickle and all my Sickle cousins and aunts and uncles. And he said, now, what is Jesus's last name? And she said, well, Jesus doesn't have a last name. He's just the son of God. Everybody knows that. You guys can come ahead. He said, everybody knows that Jesus doesn't have a last name. His name's Jesus. He said, no, mom, I think it's us. Jeez, us. He said, mama, I love being a part of the us family, don't you? <laughs> so I love being a part of the us family, don't you? And we're going to dedicate some us family today. So make welcome, Pastor Kent. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Beautiful babies. Looks like a little preacher there. <laughs> Amen. Like yeah. What's his name? Dawson. Dawson. Yeah. This is Devario and Ange Angelique Parson. And this is baby Dawson. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of our Isn't church. Isn't beautiful? And, oh, my uh, goodness. And this is Shane and Emily Hovind. Yeah. And I, this feel, is I feel old today because if I'm not mistaken, you used to come to our meetings years ago, when right? When they were little kids. When she was just a child. Uh -huh, yeah. She yeah. used to come to meetings I held in um, Lincoln, Lincoln, Illinois. Yeah. 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 And so here you are. Uh, mother with her own child and um this is uh it's a momentous moment yes. in y'all's lives and i was thinking about this hannah wanted children so bad and god gave her a baby but she told the lord she said if you will give me a son i will give him back to you and that moment that she made that commitment to God of course it loosed something in heaven over her because she wound up with many more children but when she gave him back to the Lord he became a leader of Israel today by this act of you standing on this platform and you telling God we are dedicating these children to you you are putting back into the hands of God what God has put into your home. And by this rite of passage, the fact that you're telling God, I'm giving you control over my child, that means that disease and sickness can't come nigh your dwelling, That's right. that your children will not yes. have behavioral issues, yes. that you won't get a phone call that they're in jail when they're That's 17. Right that they'll never get hooked on drugs yes. hallelujah. hallelujah that they will be virgins when they get married yes. and they will be great parents yes. and that you will not suffer the heartache of what you've seen parents suffer that chose not to go the route of putting Christ in their life and so today as we lay hands on these babies yes. we are with joy yes. asking the father with open arms to receive these children 
into the hands of the Lord. I'm going to try to hold them both at one time. <laughs> He's living. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I've held babies before. Jesus. Amen. Lord, I thank you, God, for the fruit that comes from heaven. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord, that today we put anointing on these babies, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Hallelujah. And every weapon God is defeated in the name of the Lord. And that Lord Jesus, that as a young child, they'll receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, from this moment on, we declare, hallelujah, the favor of God upon this young man. God, we declare the favor of the Lord upon this lady. God, that what you created them for will be fulfilled by the power of God. And Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We anoint them today. Now, God, we speak over the parents. Wisdom. Hallelujah. God, we speak, Lord, that in those times of indecision that you will give them answers. Lord, we speak over their marriages. Hallelujah. That divorce will not touch these this home. God, that these children will be raised in a house. Hallelujah. That has the divine favor upon it. Now, God, we declare that these men will be leaders of their house. Lord, that the altars of God would be raised up. Hallelujah. That, oh, Lord, that hell will shake when they hear the sound of prayer that comes up out of these homes. We seal it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of that made you want to have a child yourself so you could come up here? <laughs> Think I'll pass on that. Praise God. I do want to encourage our men, um, if at all possible, to come to the our retreat, uh, we don't, we've not done this in a long time, and I believe that in these seasons that God makes a real impartation of the Spirit of the Lord, and um, if it's a financial issue, if you would reach out to um, one of our leaders, I promise you that we'll, we'll make sure that somehow you're getting to that men's meeting. I don't want this to be a church that excludes people simply because... Um, you know, they weren't able financially to come. I want to um, take our passage of reading today out of the book of Romans, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. This is Romans chapter 4, and it's a very familiar passage of Scripture to many of you. Um, verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. You got to remember now when, when God is saying this, it hasn't happened yet. But the Lord is speaking as if it already has. I have not going to make thee a father of many nations, not just Israel, but many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, Calleth those things which be not as though they were. This verse is really important. Who against hope or when there was nothing to hope for. Still, hallelujah, believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old. This, these verses, part of it's referring to things that are dead. God's talking about they're going to do things, and he's referring to them. It sounds like they're already dead. He didn't consider his own body now dead, nor yet he was about 100 years old, nor yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, and I would like to just 
use another word here, what God had prophesied, he was also able to perform. Now, Lord, we sense in the Spirit, God, that you are <clears throat> releasing a shift in the Holy Ghost, and that, Lord, today there is being released out of heaven a steel bar of faith putting in the back of thy people, that, Lord, it does not matter what has been said, not matters what we have heard the wicked rage against you with, that, God, your word, hallelujah, is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, divides between the natural and the spiritual and brings to pass what you have spoken. So be it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you can be seated. I, I want to preach to you today. Uh, on prophecy, and uh, this is something that this week God began to put in my spirit. <clears throat> there is outside of probably speaking in tongues, there has been <clears throat> nothing that has brought more division in the body of Christ over the last few years than prophecy, especially in the last three years. Uh, the prophetic... <clears throat> is the oldest gift in the Bible. There is no other gift. It exceeds the apostle, it exceeds the evangelist, it exceeds the pastor and the teacher. Because in Acts it says this, that Abel was a prophet and that his blood still cries from the ground. So the very first human, because many theologians, and we can't prove this, but many theologians believe that Cain and Abel were twins. So the very first human that came forth out of the womb was a prophet. Because God always has to have prophets in order to establish order and point the way for the kingdom of the Lord. Reason being is because prophecy declares something that's going to happen, but it is generally preceded by something devastating or something that's getting ready to die that you're not anticipating. Prophets, <clears throat> by and large, are not well-liked. Jesus spoke of this to the Pharisees. He said, you have killed the prophets. More than once you will find in the Old Testament where the Lord will say, I sent you prophets early in the morning, but you would not receive their words. Prophecy, true prophecy, really doesn't have that much to do with individuals. It has more to do with the direction of nations and the fulfillment of the plan of God in the earth. Unfortunately, there's no office that's probably been more abused over the last several years in the church than the office of the prophet. There are more self-appointed prophets than there are God-appointed prophets. <clears throat> Prophecy, when God truly begins to release, release it, generally is not real vague. It may not seem as applicable to the hearers of it as to the individual or the entity that God is referring to. But we know this, that God releases the word of the Lord to people because for divine direction. When God began to shift the nations in the earth over the last, really around 2020, when the enemy came in with the coronavirus, there wasn't a lot of warning about that prophetically. You very, you, it's very, very hard to go back and find anybody that was very specific about the coronavirus. 
Now, there are many since then after the fact that said, oh, yeah, I prophesied that. That's what I meant when I said that. But you really didn't know at the time what they were talking about. It was so ambiguous, ambiguous that you couldn't even really say what it was. God very seldom will mess up as far as the, he never messes up in the prophetic. And when God wants you to know something, he's going to let you know something. God began to highlight the office of the prophet especially in the United States because he was declaring that something was getting ready to happen he did begin to tell us of different events whether it was shutting down sports or it was the upheaval of politics and some of the things that God began to do over over the prophetic realm God was warning us that something is getting ready to happen that you're not going to like. But don't let it move you from your center in me. God will warn us and tell us that there's something getting ready to take place. I can't, you know, I've heard people give prophetic words and say, well, you know, I believe that God's getting ready to do something. Well, anybody can say that. I mean, we know God's getting ready to do something. But when you go back to the Old Testament, when these guys begin to prophesy, they say, you're going to meet a man, he's going to have three donkeys, and he's going to be carrying two loaves of bread and a jug of wine, and they're going to be at such and such a spot. And when you get to him, they're going to say, you need to go home because your father's worried about you and the donkeys have been found. And then it would happen like that. When God begins to move prophetic, prophetically in the earth, as he has, it's because he saw that there's something else getting ready to take place that was going to shake the foundations of people if they were not rock solid on the things of God. When you go back, in fact, there are seasons where we walk so close to the spirit of death that you can see its shadow. Yea, do I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. How many can say, I've seen the shadow of death this year? But seeing it doesn't mean it triumphs. When Joseph was 17 years old, he was the apple of his father's eye. He had the coat of many colors. He was the special child in the house. And then God begins to speak to him prophetically in dreams. And he sees where, you know, these ill-fated cows and these fine-fed cows and then, and, and then stars and the moon and, and the sun are bowing down to him. And God begins to talk to him and he tells his father what he sees and his brothers. And his father begins to interpret the dream. He said, the sun and the moon are me and your mother and the stars are your brother. He says, how dare you to think that we would bow down to you? Why would God give Joseph this dream? Because there was events getting ready to take place in Joseph's life that if he did not have the prophetic to hold on to he would have thrown in the towel and before we ever came into the last three years in this nation we have a more sure word of prophecy uh, that there shall be light in the evening time uh, that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former uh, that my house shall be called a house of prayer uh, that the name of the Lord shall be lifted up and all nations shall come unto the things of God. You cannot be moved by what you hear the enemy say but you got to get up in the Holy Ghost and say I got a Holy Ghost word of the Lord that already told me yea do I walk through the valley of the saddle of death. I am coming out of this. God doesn't let the enemy surprise us. Prophecy always precedes storms. When 
Donald Trump was president, and he's getting ready to run again, and we're all excited, and we see all these things happening, and the nation's going good, and gas is cheap, and everybody's blessed, and our nation is, is a strong nation in the world. We didn't see this coming. And we won't, I don't want to get into the political side of it, but I, what I'm telling you is that God raised up prophets. Some of them we've had on this platform. But there are false prophets too. This is why the Bible says that true prophets are not known by their accuracy. They're known by their fruit. And it's not just being able to say, thus saith the Lord. It's the lifestyle that they live. When Joseph was 17, and in a moment's time, he goes from being his father's favorite to being hated by his brethren. And then he is sold into slavery. By the time he's 18, his whole world has blown up. If he had not had the word of the Lord that told him there would come a day when your brothers will bow down to you, he would have said, I am not going to make it. I'm going to die in this. How could he walk like he did? Because the scripture says this, that hope is the anchor of the soul. And we have a more sure word of prophecy. And not only that, see, because we know this, the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care who gets voted in this year. I will tell you this, that we have a more sure word of prophecy that says that when the dust settles and time is no more, that hell doesn't win, evil doesn't triumph, but there is a God named Jehovah Jireh that will rule and reign march into Jerusalem hallelujah on the back of a white horse and there will be victory in the earth and for 1,000 years every demon will be bound Satan will be in hell no sickness no disease why because we have the word of the Lord that already declares it God uses prophets to point the way. And I think I've showed you this, but fivefold ministry is the small finger is the teacher because it gets in the ear. The ring finger is the pastor because he marries people to God. The middle finger or the, the ring finger, the, the, the middle finger is the evangelist because he reaches the farthest. The index finger is a prophet because he points. See, God has to have prophets that point the way, that declare prophecies more about don't be moved by what you see, but be moved by what God has already said. The apostle is the thumb because it's the only one that can touch all the others. And this, this, this week in prayer, I heard the Lord say, I'm getting ready to touch ministers, and I'm going to begin to anoint them to begin to step over into other realms of fivefold ministry. I also know this, that we're getting ready. There's a shift coming from prophets having the attention put on them to the apostolic. Because once God gets you to the destination, you don't have to have a sign that tells you how to get there. You need understanding on how to survive where you are. And God is raising up men, hallelujah, that, that for, for years I only operated as an evangelist. And then I began, in my late 20s, I began to operate as a pastor. Uh, probably uh, a mistake at that age. <clears throat> When I was 35, God anointed me into the office of the prophet. And now here I am, and for the last 20 years or so, I've shifted back into the realm of the pastor. But I find myself touching all of those areas because that's what it takes in the spirit of the Lord.
But we're getting ready to see the apostolic. And with the apostolic, we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles in the house of the Lord. When you go back to Ezekiel 37, and this is the the vision that Ezekiel has of the dry bones, the first thing that is amazing to me is God already knew where the dry bones were. God already saw where we are as a nation before we ever got there. And when he saw the dry bones, the first thing it says is that they've obviously been dry for, they've been dead for a long time because they're dry and they're humiliated because no one's allowed them to be buried. And they are the semblance of what was once a great army, but the enemy defeated them. Can I tell you that America and the church has been a pile of dry bones that is a testimony to what we were in past decades but we lay in a valley but God knows where the church is and there is no there is no plan of the enemy that is ever going to take the church out I don't understand how God moves but I know this God still moves I don't understand everything I prophesied or others have prophesied but I know this my word cannot return into me void says God that it's not coming back to heaven and say I'm sorry I could not bear fruit but God says hallelujah that what he's declared he will also perform I I loose in this building today uh, for you to have ears to hear uh, that we are in the middle of a year of reversal says God uh, and that God uh, is getting ready to blow on a valley uh, of dry bones uh, and what was dead uh, is getting ready to come back to life but when you read this story When God is looking at the dry bones and he's thinking, I have to have them come back to life, what did he do? He had to get a prophet. He had to get a prophet and get him where they were. And when he got the prophet there, because the prophet had the ability to call up the Spirit of the Lord... And when God looked at him, he began to speak to him and he said, now prophesy. Hallelujah. Now prophesy. And Ezekiel don't even know because the Lord said, can they live? He said, I don't know. You know. All I see is a bag of dry bones. God said, well, prophesy, hallelujah. And the Bible said, when the prophetic begin to get loose in the spirit. See, I I really believe that the prophetic got off tangent, got off course over the last couple of years. And it, whenever people begin to be highlighted or they've been unknown and all of a sudden they're known or they're famous, Unless you have real deep roots in God, it will throw you off center. I think that's why God waited till I was almost 70 years old before he ever gave me, because now I don't really care. If I was 35, it might be a different story. But now I recognize, hallelujah, that I'm just getting a hold of something that is sovereign and divine by the Spirit of the Lord. And I think that we got off kelter a little bit, and we began to turn the prophetic to where we wanted it to happen so bad that we put words in God's mouth. But you can't do that, hallelujah. This was never about a man. This was never about politics. This is about the last harvest of souls that God is trying to raise up in this hour by the power of God. And when God looked at the prophet and said, let out of your mouth what I have put in your spirit. And he said, prophesy to the wind. All of a sudden they heard a noise. I hear something in the spirit by the Holy Ghost. And God is saying there's 
there's a rattling and a shaking getting ready to happen by the Holy Ghost. And there is demon spirits that are going to run for the hills, saith the Lord, because they are not dealing with a dead army. But this army that's rising up, saith God, it's full of the anointing of the Lord. <clears throat> You have to hold on to what God's already said. If you constantly are affected because the devil prophesies. Go back and read Goliath and David. Goliath basically saying, thus saith Goliath. I'm going to take your head off your shoulders. I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air. David thought because David was a prophet. He said, well, how about this? Thus saith the Lord, you're uncircumcised, and I'm going to take your head off of you, and all of Israel shall know who is God. Right. See, there is, there's a battle because what you're seeing in the media is the enemy prophesying. You're hearing a Goliath spirit. He's saying, this is what we're going to do, and this is what's going to happen. But see, you, God has to give us a chance. And you have to hold on. Those of you that right now are in a valley, most of the time, before you ever get there, God will give you a prophetic word that tells you that I'm getting ready to do something great in your life. So that when, when this storm comes that you get in, and some of you are in it, that you don't let it kill you, but you go back to what I read in Romans, when there was nothing to hope for, he still believed. When his body's dead, his loins are dead, Sarah's womb is dead, it is impossible. But he had the word of the Lord that said, out of your loins that you see that are dead, and out of that 90-year-old woman whose, whose womb is dead, I am going to bring life. God has waited. I know this by the Spirit. God has waited until it is such a mess in this nation that when he does it, he will be the only one that gets the glory. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there will be nobody that say, well, we all need to go to such and such a state because that's ground zero. That's where it happened. It's because of them. Uh, nobody's going to be able to stand up and say, I wrote about it. I preached about it. I prophesied. I told you that on this date it was going to happen. No, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Uh, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Uh, that is the spirit of the Lord begins to move, uh, that we begin to go to our knees. Hallelujah. And we begin to say to God, God, be the glory for the things that you have done. That God would get the praise. That the word of the Lord that's already been released by the Holy Ghost shall come to pass. God releases things that are preposterous. A few years ago when the Lord spoke to me, and I remember the Lord saying, you tell them that I said because sports took my day, I'm going to take their day and I'm going to shut them down. And I thought, I ain't saying that. Because, <laughs> well, number one, it's either right or wrong. Right. And one of the, well, you know, he could have meant this. But God always, he will always release things that, that are crazy sometimes. This is what, this, I believe of what we're getting ready to see God do this year. That we, when we have our New Year's Eve service, we're going to look back and say, oh, my God. Look what God has done. Yes. Hallelujah. Look what God has done. I, I had friends call me and say, Pastor Ken, I've always believed in your prophetic, but I think you missed it. There's no way that college sports is going to be shut down and pros are going to be shut down. And, and, and God did it <clears throat> simply because he was showing us that if he says it, it's going to happen. When, when you go to the scriptures, <clears throat> uh, I was thinking of Apostle Paul. He's early on in Acts 
the prophet comes to him and the Spirit of the Lord speaks to him and says this, Paul, because even as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so shall you testify of me in Rome. Great word. Fast forward into the, I think, Acts chapter 28. We now find this preacher on the island of Malta. He's come out of a shipwreck and he is putting wood on a fire. And here comes this large, venomous snake, very poisonous, that doesn't just strike him, but coiled around him. And when Paul looks down, he can see the head of that poisonous snake with its fangs turned into his, into his hand, his wrist, and venom is being shot into his bloodstream. What do you do when the devil's bit you and you've got the venom of death flowing through your veins and everybody around you says, I've seen this snake bite other people and they're dead in a few minutes. He looked at that and he said, but I got a word of prophecy. Hallelujah, that says, as I was in Jerusalem, so am I going to testify of God in, Paul, in Rome. So, snake, you've done your best, but you're going to get off now. And he just began to do this, and the Bible said he shook him off in the fire. Some of you need to go back to what God has already promised you by the Holy Ghost, that God will reward those that diligently seek him, and he will give his change charge over you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I cast the snake out of this building in the name of the Lord. I speak healing to your blood by the Spirit of God that no weapon will take you out. When Nicholas was in the hospital, looked like he, they said he was dying. He was born three months premature, and my wife and I are standing there, and we're looking at him. And a pastor's wife, but we were staying with, reminded my wife. She said, didn't you have a dream before she ever met me? She was still single. She had a dream that she was holding a little fat baby, brown-eyed, and she was holding him up to a Christmas tree. Did you say his name? She said, look, Nicholas, look at the Christmas tree. And he was super healthy. And she said, didn't you have a dream? And my wife remembered what God had spoke to her in that dream. And we begin to declare the word of the Lord when he's had every wire hooked up to him and they're pronouncing death over him and he weighs two pounds. He can't eat on his own, swallow on his own, generate body heat on his own. He can't do any of those things. He's on life support system. And yet we had a sure word, a prophecy to hold on to. Tis a glorious church. Hallelujah. Tis a glorious church. I, I, I'm thinking about where we are in our building program. And I told the Lord, because we're, we're in the final stages of, of getting our loan to finish this building, and if we can finish this building, if we, as soon as we get our loan, we can finish it, they say, in 90 days. So it's very possible that we can have our April conference if God does something <clears throat> powerful. But I've heard the Lord say more than once, Ted Shuttlesworth told me, he said, God said to tell you when you turn the key, it'll be debt free. And I've prophesied that God says we're, we're going to have this building paid for. And, uh, and then I, and I drive by there and I see it standing still. And I just, we have a sure word of prophecy. Hallelujah. 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 My God, I feel something in the Holy Ghost. 
See, you can't look at the storm. You can't listen to the lies of the enemy. But at some point in your life, you got to stand up and say, I'm getting on the word of the Lord. Doesn't matter where I'm at. Doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter what the experts are saying. This is what God already said over my life. This is what God already said over this nation. This is what God already declared through the mouth of the prophets that we are going to triumph. You have to go back because prophecy is something that you hold on to. Hallelujah. In all of the years, 13 years, that Joseph was alienated from his family. Never once does the scripture record him indicting God. But even in prison, he operated in the interpretation of dreams, and thus saith the Lord. I have to think that when Potiphar's wife accused him of rape, and he is arrested and put back into prison. And he's sitting there, and he's been gone from his dad and his brothers, his mom, for a long time, <clears throat> or from his dad. And he's sitting in that dark dungeon. Those prisons back then weren't like the prisons today. And it's nighttime, probably rats. You can see them running it's cold, and he's sitting there thinking, what, what's going to happen to me? But he would go back, and he would remember what he saw in that dream, and that his daddy interpreted and said, me and your mom and your brothers are not bowing down to you. <clears throat> What got Joseph through the 13 years was the prophetic dreams that he had. It was all he had. We have more than what prophets have spoken over this nation. First Peter, we have a more sure word of prophecy. And that's the word of God. Give and it shall be given unto you pressed down, shaken together, heaped up, running over, shall men give into your bosom that you cannot outgive God. I speak over every tither in this building and around the world listening to us. I break the devourer in the name of Jesus off of you right now in the name of the Lord. And I begin to loose the prophetic word of God over you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Boy, I feel something in the spirit. We are in the miracle month. I loose miracles in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This heaviness, this despair of the enemy that's trying to make you believe a lie that the devil has declared over you. We cancel that in the name of the Lord. And we go back to what God has already declared over your life, that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and you are not the borrower. That God will give you houses to live in that you did not build, lands that you did not buy. All oh, that the Spirit of God will get loose in your spirit and God will begin to turn over on the inside of you to you say, I feel like a fire is shut up in my bones. I break heaviness to date. I break depression. I break discouragement. I lose a roar of the Holy Ghost to come up out of your spirit. The enemy cannot reverse the word of the Lord. 
God cannot lie. He's not a man that he should repent. One of the greatest examples of prophecy begins to originate in the Old Testament. You have 16 prophets in the Old Testament with Isaiah leading the way. And Isaiah in 53 begins to talk about the storm that would come against the Lamb of God. That it would be so devastating and so tumultuous that he would be unrecognizable from the torture that would come upon him. That his own friend would turn his heel against him. That he would be forsaken by those around him. That he would be homeless and that people would jeer and laugh at him. David, in the Proverbs or in the Psalms, took up that lament that he could see his bones. And now you have the fulfillment standing, walking Jerusalem, the shores of Galilee, Jesus. And over his life, Now is this canopy of prophecies that one day, hallelujah, it would look like it's over. But in three days, prophecy says, hallelujah, that the enemy's plans was coming to an end. And when Jesus would read those, he knew what was going to happen to him because he would take his disciples aside and he would say, the Son of Man is getting ready to go to Jerusalem where he is going to be murdered and crucified. And, of course, Peter grabbed him and said, no, that's not going to happen to you. Jesus said, You don't speak the things of God. You speak the things of men. And when Jesus stood there, he looked at him and he said, I know that there's a storm coming. And I know that death is going to hit me. But he said, I want to tell you my name. I'm resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. most of us should not be here. I should not be standing on this platform today or this afternoon preaching the gospel to you, but I am because of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Most of you should not be here, but you've held on to what God has declared over your life. And when they took Jesus, hallelujah, and... The storm hit him and all that they had prophesied about him came to pass. And he's hanging on the cross and finally he slumps and no more breath in him. And people begin to weep and the son of God looks like he's gone. But oh, can I tell you that there was a clock in the spirit that began to tick. And every second, they cried. If you could hear it, every time it clicked, it said, resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. And all the angels are watching, hallelujah, the clock in glory. Eight hours passes, 24 hours pass, and the angels are just walking around, and they're looking over the balcony at that tomb. See, right now, it looks like the enemy has buried the church. They've given us shots. They've given us masks. They've shut down our buildings. But can I tell you that resurrection is just around the corner and the glory of God. I cry, hallelujah, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We loose out of your spirit today that there is a resurrection anointing that begins to come up out of your spirit. And on the last 
72 hours when that last minute hit hallelujah prophecy in heaven rolled over and said get him up can I tell you by the spirit of the Lord that there is some prophetic words of God that are released in the heavens that cannot go unfulfilled but God will fulfill everything that he has declared over you This is what I want to leave with you today. Hallelujah. You're going to have to hold on yes. in the storm yeah. yes. to what God said to you before the storm ever came. Yes. You're going to have to hold on to it. You cannot be moved by what you see. Yes. You've got to be moved by what God has already said. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we've shed our tears. Weeping has endured for the night. But the Lord says, as long as I'm around, the sun will rise the next day. And I believe that the midnight hour has already passed prophetically. And that there is a changing in the spirit by the Holy Ghost. And that God is now. And I can also tell you this, that time has speeded up. I feel that very strong in the Holy Ghost, that there is an acceleration in the spirit, and the enemy is saying, no, let's slow this thing back down because we're losing control. God's saying, no, it's time, hallelujah, for the church to arise by the spirit of the Lord. How many of you feel like you got a snake wrapped around you? Bible always calls him that, that old serpent. We, in the name of Jesus, I break the Leviathan spirit. <laughs> I break the Leviathan spirit <clears throat> off of you in Jesus' name. Marabobo Sunday, hallelujah. That the venom that the enemy has put into you is negated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can see it in the Holy Ghost. There are serpents crawling out of this building right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I I hear a sound of praise trying to get loose in this building in the name of the Lord. As you begin to feel the Spirit of the Lord begin to rise up in you, you need to get to your feet and raise your hands. And we need to loose the voice of God. That, oh, when there's nothing to hope for, we're still believing in the word of the Lord. We're still believing that what God has promised, he is able to perform. See, the enemy wants to kill the prophetic that God has released over this nation and over the earth. That's what this thing is about. It's an an attack. It's not so much on individual men. That's not what I'm talking about. The enemy hates prophecy because it is the word of God declaring judgment on the enemy. God is performing what thus saith the Lord has declared. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Lord, we release, we receive the money for our new building. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I don't ever say this, but I'm telling you right now, we need, we need God to release $10 million. I'm calling it in in the name of Jesus that what the Lord has already said and what he wants to do, we declare a union in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I call this I, prophetically, I declare to the name of the Lord by faith that this is the most prosperous church in the state of Tennessee. That you are the most blessed tithers, hallelujah, that have already given. I also declare in the name of the Lord over every seed that's already been planted, every dollar that's already came in, that was given out a great sacrifice that God would breathe on what you gave hallelujah that there begin to be a multiplying that no longer does this seed stay as a seed in the ground but that the seed of the Lord begin to be released by the power of God hallelujah now I ask God to begin to touch your mind that God will begin to let you see in the spirit I ask the Lord to begin to give this congregation whether you're online or in this building dreams visions open visions divine encounters with angels in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we break this ceiling over this house in the name of the Lord and we begin to declare by the Spirit of God that prophecy begin to bring forth an open heaven over this house in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now may joy begin to come up upon you. May the anointing of God begin to break every yoke every chain that has bound you in the name of the Lord that there is a liberty now where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty we command every demon to run and we lose every angel of God in this house in the name of the Lord hallelujah as you're coming quickly to the front I'm asking God right now to begin to lose boldness on you. My prayer partners, quickly come and you can get across the front. All my prayer partners. <clears throat> this is what I want God to do for you today. I want God to put fight back in you. May the Lord put a spirit of fight back in you. <clears throat> the enemy wants to beat you down until you just can't resist anymore may God put fight back in you get up as close as you can we got lots of people coming move on up. <clears throat> and also I'm asking God to give you a spirit of boldness may God give you a spirit of boldness listen to me the Holy Ghost in you is greater than the devils that are attacking you and you're going to have to get angry in the Holy Ghost. And you're going to have to begin to declare the prophetic word of God that's over you. So, Brick Ken, I've never had a personal prophecy. You got it coming out of the Bible. God is no respecter of persons. Slip up your hands. I want you to lift up your voice. And I want you to tell God what you need Him to do for you. Hallelujah. If you do it real loud, nobody can hear what you're saying next to each other. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that today, God, on this Sunday, there are going to be testimonies that are going to be birthed out of this altar of the supernatural that has been released by the Spirit of God. And God, that the prophetic that you declared over us whether through individual prophecy or through the word of the Lord shall come to pass this week I call in homes hallelujah houses that no one will ever be homeless in this in this church <clears throat> hallelujah 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 if you have a prayer language, begin to pray it in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I, I, I can see it by the Spirit of the Lord. God is releasing something right now in the Holy Ghost. If you need a prayer partner, our prayer partners are all along the front of this, this altar right here. And they'll pray with you. <clears throat> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in this nation. 
God, we thank you, Lord, that this year we're going to see the muscle of your arm unveiled in this nation. That, God, you're reversing. Hallelujah, God, you're calling death to an end. And that you are reversing, God, what the enemy has done to the righteous. That justice and equity is coming back to the kingdom of the Lord and to our nation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> now all this week, I want you to find some places in the Bible, find scriptures that apply to you. And I want you to begin to quote them to the Lord because they are an anchor. They're an anchor to your soul. Your soul is your will, your mind, and your emotions. That's where depression gets in and despair. Praise God. Listen, God cares about you. God cares about this church. This is going to be the best year we've ever had. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, so give this to my wife. Slip your hands up. As Jasmine comes and leads us in worship, prophesy over yourself. Come into agreement with what God has already declared over your life, over your children. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find the Lord says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy and when you testify of the glory and the majesty of Jesus Christ it is a prophetic word of what he's about to do in your life so I just want us to decree and declare Isaiah 57 
uh, that no weapon, 5417, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. For every family, for every business that is having financial reversal, we declare Malachi 310 that says, and the windows of heaven will be open and pour out blessing. There is not room enough to receive it. And we declare it by the spirit of prophecy in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. In the name of Jesus, we declare health and prosperity in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you for the greatest people on the planet that are under the sound of our voice right now. God, we thank you that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we think or ask. God, we thank you that if two touch anything on earth and agree, it shall be done. So, Father, now, in Jesus' name, we join our faith and our prayers together, and we decree increase. We decree blessing. We decree an open heaven over this church and over your people, God, in 2024. And God, we thank you in advance. God, we're going to be careful to praise you on this side of the river. God, we're not going to wait till we see it done. We're going to praise you now. Give Jesus Christ the greatest praise of the day. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. Did you enjoy your pastor today? God bless you, Pastor Kent. Amen. Uh, I think he's about to go and uh, I think be with Amanda Grace and Brother Robin Bullock on a television show. So be praying for Pastor Kent as he goes to do that. I think they're praying over the, the Trump children today, Eric and all those guys. So Lord, just stretch your hand towards Pastor Kent. Father, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the word of the Lord, the prophetic word that is in his mouth. God, we pray a double portion of anointing over him in Jesus' name. We speak a blessing of the Lord over our pastor in the name of Jesus. All right. Hug two or three people. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. I love you. Go with the Lord. God bless you.